I would like to focus on a specific protective and intelligence vulnerability pertaining to diplomatic vehicles in this week's Above the Terror Line. Terrorists believed to be linked to Iran targeted two Israeli diplomatic vehicles on February the 13th, with one vehicle targeted in Tbilisi, Georgia, in the former Soviet Union, and a second vehicle targeted in New Delhi, India. Stratfor's Vice President of Tactical Intelligence, Scott Stewart, addressed the operational details of this attack in a Stratfor dispatch that I would encourage you to watch. Today, I'd like to drill down into one issue of this case that has traditionally been an Achilles heel for diplomats, the diplomatic license plate. In most countries, the host government provides diplomats with special license plates that have different characteristics than the plates issued to local residents. Frequently, diplomatic plates have a different color scheme and a different system of numbers and letters. To be blunt, they usually stick out like a sore thumb and make it easier to identify the nationality of the vehicle's occupants. In some countries, high threat targets like U.S. or Israeli diplomats are allowed to bypass this requirement and use locally issued plates so they can better blend into the local environment. But this is not the norm. For each host government, there are benefits and drawbacks to this system. Providing diplomats with easy to spot plates allows the host government intelligence officials the ability to easily surveil diplomats and keep close track of their activities, including all movements and meetings. In countries where corruption is a problem, the host government sometimes avoids problems with foreign governments by ensuring that corrupt police and officials do not target vehicles with diplomatic plates. However, the host government must also deal with the problems that this system creates, most specifically the fact that terrorists and even common criminals can use the easily identifiable plates for their own surveillance activities. For example, I've investigated attacks on diplomats in Cairo, Sana'a, and Khartoum, and other locations where our investigations revealed that the targets were specifically identified and surveilled using their diplomatic plates. Ramzi Yosef, the mastermind of the first World Trade Center bombing, also used this tactic walking around the diplomatic area of Islamabad and identifying the residences of British and American diplomats that could be attacked based on Pakistani-issued diplomatic license plates. What's the above the tear line aspect of this video? Operationally, the host government faces some problems using specialized license plates on vehicles belonging to diplomats. But the high value of this surveillance and intelligence tool makes it too important to lose, even if that value also extends to terrorists and criminals. The plates can lead the host government to a wealth of valuable information, including the monitoring of movements and meetings and the possibility to smoke out spies among the local population and those hiding under diplomatic cover.